Tri-State Megabucks. Now, with all the action, here's Dick Leone. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome once again to another season of Candlepin Bowling right here at the Vacation Land Bowling Center. I'm Dick Leone, your host, and alongside me, Chris Anton, the color analyst. We've Good afternoon. Got We've got an, uh, an exciting show to start things off here, Chris, as we have the defending champion returning. He's a local boy and a legend in his own time, none other than Don Saucier. He will be taking on the red-hot Matt Pico from Saco Valley up in Freiburg. He qualified, folks, and I'll tell you, whopping with a whopping 7-11. Yes, I can't believe it either. For five, no less. He had a, a high string in there of 208. And after a slow beginning, he came on and he was smoking. So we should have some pretty good excitement to get things rolling. Well, you got two two bowlers that can throw the ball pretty well. They have a lot of control. You've got a bowler that's been around for about 30 years, and you have the younger Pico who's been around for the past 10, although he was a great junior bowler. So I think it should be an interesting match. Well, we're going to uh, show you exactly what they can do right after this. All right, we're going to get Matt Pico up on the approach, and he'll start things off here as we get rolling. He will lead off in the first and third strings, and Don Saucier, the defending champion from last year, will be uh, seeing what he can do, certainly, to uh, maintain that advantage of the defending champion. I think we should clarify that Don won the last match of the weekly matches, and, of course, uh, we had Al Nelson who won the big final shot for $5,000. And of course, he qualified to get in that deck. You have to play five holes to have the best one three string matches during the season. Yes, and Don advanced uh, via a 389, 338 victory over Al Nelson in week number 36. That's the ra last regularly scheduled show that we had on Main Candlepin Bowling. And of course, as Chris said, the overall champion who uh, took home some $2,500 plus bonus money, Al Nelson. Starting out with a 10 box, Matt Pico. As I mentioned, he qualified with a 7-11. He was 219 after two. Now, that's only about 109 and a half, 110 average. Nothing, uh, nothing to write home about. But then he went 208, 160, 124, he ended up with a 7-11, five-string total to qualify number one. And right behind him with just four pins to spare, Al Joy of the Colonial Lanes in Westbrook. And he'll be our next week's uh, challenger. So Pico with a 10 and an 8 leads off with 18 after 2. The 1989-90 defending champion from vacation land. These are his home lanes, Don Saucier. It's that rolling wood coming back toward the right channel. Now he's looking at the ever tough split, the two. Try to cut that onto the 10. The two pin onto the 10. A lot of distance between, a very tough shot. Don Saucier's league average, 125. His high single, best ever, 193. Best triple for Don over many, many years of bowling. Nearly 40, in fact. It's 450. And he has a high five of 743. 1395, 10 string total to his credit. Off on the right side, a quarter hit this time. He'll want to get between that one and the two, or either that or try to go outside on the one, depending on which way his ball works best on this particular spare attempt. He pulled it down by, gets everything but the head pin. So Saucier after two, one pin up, 1918. Matt Pico from Bridgeton bowls out of the Saco Valley lanes up in Freiburg, Jimmy Lane's house. There it is. There's the hammer. He got uh, six strikes in that string of the ball, uh, 208 in uh, at Beacon. 
A lot of strikes and one strike. Chris, the um, alternate, John Richardson from Saco Valley, came in with a 662. And as you and I know, in most cases, that would have been number one qualifier. <laughs> but he's uh, he's number five and an also ran in that he group. Was, he was 662. Frank Lane from Saco Valley was 660. So they had three Saco Valley guys in both 660 or better. That's unbelievable. And I'll tell you, folks, you figure it out with or without an adding machine. That's a lot of pins to uh, average in a course of a five-string match. So Pico coming up with the first mark of the match, that being the strike, and he puts nine on it, ten and following in the uh, fourth frame, 47 through four. Don Saucier now working in the third frame, looking still for his first mark. Waits for that wood to settle down. Gets the okay from the referee and law of line judge John Killinger. Back again for another season. Right on it. So Don coming back with a spare of his own as he converts the four, seven, and the eight. Those are the numbers of the pins which you'll hear us frequently talk about. Working now on a bonus ball. Right in that one three pocket, but not extremely happy with that leave. He's got the five pin and then the four seven on the left side, but a couple of pieces of wood out in front of the five. He used the wood and gets everything but the seven. Double wood, tough to predict what they will do. So we have a one pin difference now matches uh, swung the other way as Pico with that slim lead through three. Back with a 10 box. An interesting note, Chris. Uh, of course, Don Saucier and Ray Doobie, two of the better bowlers from this uh, bit of a area. Good friends both on and off the lanes and Don was telling me before as we were talking about updates for his, uh, his Vita and everything, and he said, uh, yeah, there is an update. I said, what's that? Well, we got a whistle as uh, Matt lifted that up over the uh, lob line. He says, uh, yeah, he says, I beat uh, Ray Doobie this week for the first time this year. <laughs> That's a running battle on and off. They usually get together and uh, pretty even Steven over the, uh, over the many years they've been bowling. Matt with his second ball after the uh, foul comes up with seven. And he picks the uh, four pin out uh, clean for an eight box. 55 through the halfway point of the first string. As you know, it's a three string matchup, head to head. And the right, of course, uh, to come on next week and uh, challenge a new competitor. That being Al Joy, in the uh, third week of our new season, it will be Owen Martin from the Bowler Rammer in Sanford, qualified with a 672. Then Russ Neely, one pin behind Martin with 671. Russ, of course, bowling out of the Oxford Hill lanes up in South Paris. He'll be on in week four. So Matt, other than that strike, not really uh, in sync as of yet, but believe me, he's a very strong and a very accurate bowler. He averages 120 in league play, but on any given day, he can get them up there uh, a lot higher than that. 64 for Pico. He is four ahead of the box through six. Don Saucier, 46 through four. Looking at the four Hossman, left side, plus the nine. Didn't get the spread that time. Lead remains one for the number one qualifier, Matt Pico, as the defending champion, looking for his first strike of the match. He has one spare thus far. Take it, take it. 
lot of tough leaves here in the early going. We really haven't had a very good spare shot except for the one that Don picked up. But other than that, uh, we've had some very difficult shots to shoot at. The six and the ten on the right side, two pieces of wood that cover the seven pin. See what Don can do with this one. Tried to cut the six across, which is your probably your best attempt at a spare. But again, even at best, it was difficult. Back with a nine. So still that one pin advantage for the number one qualifier from Saco Valley, Matt Pico, who's on the approach right now. No bonus money as of yet by either of our bowlers, but if we should get uh, to that situation where Ebola throws three marks in a row, he will receive $25 extra. If he keeps that string going, it will be an additional $10 per mark as long as he can keep the marks running. So Matt working hard out there, 74 with that 10 box through seven. I think we'd like to thank the Marriott Hotel and Carol and Cushion, who we work with, for putting up the uh, that weekend package at the Marriott. I'm guessing the exact number of pins on both bowls are knocked down on any Sunday, on any Saturday. Uh, you can mail your your cards in. And uh, anyway, we want to thank the Marriott for sponsoring that again this year. A spare by Matt Pico. That's his second mark of the initial string here in our opening show of 1990-1991. Fox 51, WPXT TV, and Don Saucier, the defending champion, who returned after defeating Al Nelson last year in the 36th week. Punches right side and nearly converts. That type of spear can get you going because it's a, a very difficult one. So two pins separate the two bowlers now through the seventh frame. However, a spare up for the number one challenger and qualifier this week, Matt Pico. Now this time he got a, uh, a late drop on the left side. He may have had another split, but he's got a decent opportunity here with a 610 covered by wood. Still has to be a little careful here. Dude. That front wood. Front wood back was a bad angle. Right. Well, you're right. It's a good thing you got it come off the gun. Let's take a look at that on replay action yeah. because I'll tell you that was just as Chris described it, very, very difficult. You will see that uh, that front wood with the angle caused a little bit of anxiety for not only Don but his fans up back. It's like a seven and a wiggle on the uh, bonus here for Matt Pico. And he's got a tough shot here, but he does have a couple of pieces of wood in between. Try to see if, we, see if he goes with that six on the right side and cuts it across or uses the wood. He used the wood and tried to come off the left side board. See, there's, there's a perfect instance of his ball being so fast carried the wood in before the ball could go to the right. And if his ball would have been a little bit slower, there's a strong possibility he would have carried that right pin to spin. He had the right idea, obviously, but just couldn't quite carry it. So he comes up with seven on the fill, nine in the box, and through nine, he is 100. Ah, there's the near hammer. He throws a powerful ball. Very, very strong. Remember Matt when he was bowling junior ball and he came out of the pond of Cherry Lanes in Bridgeton, a small seven lane house there. And Been rolling well ever since. Comes up with a spare. 110 plus this bonus ball to finish things up here in the opening string. Well, he gets uh, eight of them. And a wiggle. So it'll be 118 for Matt Pico and very close to his league average of 120. Did pretty well with the three marks. He got a seven and eight and a nine on him. Three marks for 118. It's not bad at all. I'm sure he'll take that at this point. 
knowing that he struggled somewhat. Don nearly coming back with the strike. The left side wood danced all around that four pin, which he is looking at now for his spare. But he did put nine on the fill, looking for two in a row, and possibility of uh, some bonus money. Right on it. He needs one more now, of course, and he's going to be at least $25 richer and certainly close the match in the uh, tenth box. Close in on the lead that Matt Pico had built up early on of two. That was it. We've been very close all throughout the match, and now things dead even at 91 through 8. So Don Saucier has now taken the lead, at least for this box, on a seesaw battle. He comes up with a 10 box. We're even Steven after one string. So the bonus money will elude Don here in the first string. And a slim lead of one for the uh, number one qualifier. So as we enter string number two, it's a 118, 117 a matchup between uh, two good ones. We'll be back with our second and middle string right after this. All right, Don Saucier now a lead off in the middle string as he trails by one pin, 118, 117 with the opening strings and a defending champion on the approach. Once again, all over that head pin, but not what he had hoped for, the four and the 10. That's a reverse 10-4, big buddy, and uh, I'll tell you, that's a toughie. Plus wood, doesn't give him much angle. Tried to snap it across, and as you could see, obviously did not get the kick off the left side. So Saucier opens up with a 10 box. You know, the next uh, television roll off is qualified to get on this show, and there's a lot of bowlers out there to bowl in leagues and member houses. It's coming up very, very soon. Saco Valley up to uh, Freiburg. So for those of you out there that are aspiring on getting on this bowling show, what they do is they take the top four bowlers out of the roll off. It's five strings. It's twenty-two dollars. The only thing is you have to belong to a league and a member house to participate. It's October the twentieth and twenty-first, Saturday and Sunday, Saco Valley. And a very reasonable fee of just twenty-two dollars. So a nine box after looking at the spread eagle, Don Saucia picks away and comes up with a 10 9 to open things up in the middle string. Main Candlepin Bowling is proud to uh, announce that they are sponsored in part by the Big A Auto Parts this year with a convenient location near you. You think Auto Parts? Think Big A. Well, Matt Pico continues to struggle through this first part of the opening match. As he picks away and ends up with a six box to open things up here in the middle. We have a jackpot shot of uh, the one seven and the ten pins, which uh, the show winner will have an opportunity to shoot at later on. We also have a fabulous uh, weekend at the Marriott, the Portland Marriott, $250 value. That's for a home viewer, of course, if they can select the exact pinfall total for the entire six strings of our bowlers on a given show. And of course, their name has to be drawn, obviously, to, uh, to be selected. Nice try there by Matt Pico. We also have a, uh, as usual, a Beautiful 20-inch Zenith Sentry two-color television with cable-ready remote control, courtesy of Zenith and LeBlanc's Audio Video Center, Route 1 in Biddeford, and that would go to any bowler who can get a triple strike in one string. See what Don can do with these three pins, and all oh, beautifully done. Beautifully done, as you can see, maybe on the replay action, as he uh, 
made that nut probably a, made it look a little easier than it actually was. Don Saucier coming up with the first spare of the second string. And he has uh, regained the lead in the seesaw battle thus far. Leads by three overall, plus this bonus ball of five. Four Hussman right side, plus the seven pin. Talked about the uh, television rollout coming up next weekend on the 20th. On the 21st, we also have an open mixed team event at the Broadway Lanes up in Lincoln. Uh, so any of the most of the state's good bowlers will be up there along with the TV rollout. So they have to make one trip one day and go back the next to bowl the TV rollout. That's at the Broadway Lanes on October 20th and 21st in Lincoln. So Saucier, 43, three ahead of the box as we approach the midway point of the match. Coming back with that big first ball, Matt Pico, looking at that triangle left side, four, the seven, and the eight pins. This first spare. And he pulled it wide left. Matt not too happy with himself for missing that one. back with a single pin and a nine for the box. So he trails in the match overall by nine pins now. Matt's high single, best ever, 208. Of course, he threw that in the uh, qualifying five that he came on to the show this year with. That was done at Beacon Lanes in Raymond. 444, high triple, 711. High five, and again, that was his qualifying score. Nearly cuts that one across. Beautiful attempt. And a 1281 10-string total, which he threw up at his home lanes in Saco Valley. He's bowled every year that we've had the uh, main Candlepin bowling show, and kind of a part of the family now, Chris. Yeah, he's been on the show quite a few times. Still very, very young. All right, so after four in the middle string, it is the uh, defending champion who has opened up a, uh, a little bit of a lead. We'll see if he can hold on right after this. Don Saucier now will uh, see what he can do here in the fifth frame of the middle string. Oh, right on solid on number one, and he's got the spread eagle to uh, contend with. Eight pin lead overall in the match. Saucia, the defending champion, nearly converts. Gave it a right, the, uh, the right angle, but he actually cut it through the uh, front two pins, which are the two and the four. The Deadwood just slid through, comes back with a nine. You know that uh, Don Saucia was the first challenger on the first live bowling show back in 1960. You know that? I didn't until you just mentioned that, Chris. October 8th, 1960. About that. Don Sasha was the first challenger. And here we are 30 years later. And he is still doing his thing as good as ever. And the, uh, the show was held at the Mill Creek Bowling Lanes in South Florida. At the time they're no longer around. That's the right. The show was October 8th, 1960. You should ask me how I know all of that. Chris. Let me ask you something. <laughs> How do you know that? <laughs> I kind of figured that might be the answer. <laughs> Who won? I threw a double strike to beat him. Oh, great beginning and a great ending, eh? All right. And that's the way uh, most of those matches go between the Mylans and the Antons and the, the Saucias and the all of those big guns of yesteryear and today. That's great. 30 years later. Are you going to uh, shed the jacket and the tie, Chris? Is that what you're telling me? You might, you might come back? I'm safe behind the tie. I'm very safe behind the Matt Pico with an eight box. 42. And the lead now to nine overall. Saucier from Vacation Land, enjoying that little bit of a lead. Actually, it's a little more of a cushion than he had in the uh, beginning in that seesaw first string. 
where the most that either bowler led by was two. Let's see what Matt can do here. He's got two pieces of wood, but he also has to uh, catch that two pin just right to slide into the 610. He's got it beautifully done. Let's uh, take a look at that on replay action. He hit that one perfectly. And you and I can share once again how beautifully he made that one fold up. He needed it too because Saucier had a spare up. And Pico with that disadvantage of nine pins down, not wanting to let the, uh, the champion get too far away from him. Seven is the fill, looking at that triangle on the left side again. Well, looked like he may have lost his footing on that approach. Not as smooth as he normally is. That was the ball he wanted. Came back with a good cleanup and a 10. He's 79 through 7. Once again, Joey LeBlond on the scoreboard as usual. A regular fixture and great addition to the show. As I mentioned earlier, John Killinger on the line, the man in stripes and the whistle. The whistleblower from time to time. Our statistician up back and pleasant gal to have around the show, always Judy Berry. And the fine production camera crew from Fox 51, WPXT TV. Oh, nearly snapped that one across. What an excellent offer, Chris. They get what, uh, in that particular case, what they call a shot pin. He's back with a 10 box and an 89. Also want to thank once again the legend in his own time, Chris Anton, for coming on and sharing with us all these bits of trivia and things from the past, doing the color. And yours truly, once again, sixth season. Chris, it doesn't seem possible. I remember talking with you and as one of the committee members when I first came on and way, way back at the uh, Ann John's restaurant. Right. We got together and we had the meeting. That's right. And here it is six seasons later, and we're uh, still rolling. Matt Pico putting six on the fill, Bismarck, and an air ball as he goes by, whistles through for a seven. So he has fallen just a little bit here. Thirteen pins separating the two bowlers as we approach the close of the second string. Oh, picks out the two. Boy, I'd love to see that on replay if we could get it, because just to pick out that two, the ball goes one way, the pin goes the other, and hardly seems there's enough room, but obviously there is. Good cleanup ball for a second. Well, it's a big, two, two big weekends coming up at the Rollaway Lanes in Biddeford. First one is the, on October 27th, 28th, the average plus handicap mixed doubles. And of course, uh, that's where you get your handicaps and many of the league bowlers can pick up the membership card for this base. You just have to go through your bowling center and call in your entries. And on November the 4th, the following week, my junior singles are at Rollaway. So for those youngsters that are 10 and under, 11, 12, and 14, 14 and 15, and 16 and older in the school, get your chance to bowl in a junior single. Great way to start in this wonderful game of Candleton Bowling in those junior leagues. And most area houses have them. Beautiful! Look at this! Look at this! I believe the extra deadwood came from behind and kind of canceled that out as it tried to come behind the seven pin and carry that four Hussman plus one spare. So Don Saucier coming up with a 10 box but nearly converting on an excellent try. Saucier's on the main pro tour, has been for many, many years, and very respected member of the Candleton bowling community. Also still feared by many after all these years. Look at this. You can see why as he comes all oh so close in converting two in a row here as he closes out in the middle string. Both bowlers below their league average at this present time. 10 and a 109 in the middle to go with a 117. So Saucia, the defending champion, will go to 226 after two. Not exactly where he would like to be, but he does have a lead. That's more important, I guess, than big strings right now. 
Matt coming back with a nine drop, looking at the lone seven pin for a spare. Saucy with just two spares in his middle string, and Pico shooting for his second, only his second mark in nine frames. Right on it. Matt probably thinking to himself, Chris, that, you know, hey, I came in with a 7-11, that 208, the 160, the big five. I hope I haven't used them all up. Let's see what he can do here as he fills on the uh, spare in the ninth. All over the one-two pocket. He gets a decent leave on it. Seven for the fill. He's got the lead to eight. Oh, looking for two in a row, and he just clips off the right side of that triangle. So he will have to settle for a subpar string here of 100 even. And he comes roaring back with an eight drop, looking at the 610. Let's see where the wood settles now. If it helps him or hurts him, looks like it's settling in pretty good for him. Remember, he's got one behind that front front wood, too. Should have the angle on. Well, he's got it. His power ball carries both. And he's... From the shot that Saucy had. That's right. So Pico starting out the way he would like in a mocking mode. And coming right back with... There it is. Take a look at it one more time. It's hammer time, Pico style. So he's got two in a row. Remember, we've had no bonus money thus far. In fact, we've only had one person getting two in a row. That was in the early string. Now Matt, Matt Pico starting up the way we knew he could. And Don Saucier coming right back with a nine drop of his own. Got a piece of wood rolling into the left channel, but the other wood settles. Got to go right on the pin. That's right. The exactly right, Chris. Because you get too far to the right, and that one was would just whistle right around right. it. So both of our bowlers opening up with marks, and they both happen to be spares. Saucier with a lead right now of eight pins, but he's looking at a strike on the spare thrown by Matt Pico. Remember, Al Joy from Colonial Lanes will be on next week. He's always great to have. It's the right-hander can throw the big string, and he gets a good roll from the right side wall. The pin coming off that right side wall, and he's got nine on the fill, and a fairly decent opportunity to go two in a row as well. See how he carries this one? All over it. So both of our bowlers saying, hey, wait a minute now. We haven't done too much in the first two strings. Let's let's give the people a show out there. You can see that he was a little concerned with that last shot because it did stomp his foot and wanted to drive it through there because that back wood was worrying him a little bit. It looks so great on television when you see everything covered. You think the easy shot is just keep it on the lane and hit the dead wood, but that isn't the way it is all the time. That's why this game is so interesting. That's right. You never know. Beautiful three in a row, and he's got the first bonus money of the match. So Matt Pico with a beautifully thrown spare and 25 extra dollars. Looking for four in a row as he's got the four Hussman left side. Six is the fill. He's at 56. And all around it, no luck at all on that one. As you could see, the pin danced in front of the seven. Did not carry. That would have been worth an additional $10. 65 through four. So Matt Pico coming back with a vengeance here as he trailed by eight coming into this match, or this, this particular part of the match. Unless Saucier can come back with another matching uh, spare or strike in the third frame, he will uh, probably relinquish, relinquish that lead. It has been a seesaw battle, however, throughout. Seven is the fill. 
Sasha leads now by 12, and look at this. Look at this. It will not fall. A very stubborn three pin. It will not go. Ten box. So the lead now has swung the other way. Two pin advantage now for Matt Pico. You know, Dick, most of the uh, ball leagues have started up, but there's still room for all of the leagues for couples and women mornings and men nights and men mornings. But just check in with your local May State Camp and Bowling Center and find out if there's an available spot for you. Because it's October, you know, that doesn't mean we don't have a room for you. So check in with one of those people. They'd love to have you. Nice try on the cut shot. Very difficult shot for Don Saucier. Looking to salvage at least a nine in this box. And he does. So the lead remains two in the seesaw battle. Matt Pico coming back with three in a row to start this third string has regained the lead once again. You know, we were speaking of 1960 in the past, uh, Chris, just moments ago. The last pin boy. Uh, let, me, let me ask you this one. This is a little bit of a trivia question, too. Who's the last pin boy uh, in Bitterford? in 1956. Well, I probably can't give it the right name, but I can tell you that Don Sasha learned a lot about his bowling by setting up pins. And of course, he was uh, one of Nick Gillis's protégés. Of course, we all know Nick, the former Maine State Champion many, many times, and his wife Doris many times State Champion. Also, two Hall of Famers. Now, I don't know if all right, I'm gonna, say, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna add something to that. I'm gonna say at the pastime now. I'm gonna make it at the pastime. Right. right, 1956, the last pin boy at the pastime. You hit it. Hit you hit it. Don Saucier. That's right. We're looking at him right here on the show today. He was the last pin boy at the pastime in 1956. And you want to remember that that's where a lot of the good balls came from, were former pin boys. Come on, able to the clean business. Well, while we're talking about the uh, pin boy trivia here, and you, you did guess it, We've got Matt Pico heating it up once again with two more back-to-back -back spares. He got six in the fifth frame on the uh, bonus, and he's come right back with a beautiful cut shot. And Saucier now punching through on the right side here in frame five of the closing string with that 3-9 pushed out of there. He's looking at the half wister. Nearly a good shot of that uh, spare attempt. But Matt Pico, such a, an explosive bowler, as is Don Saucier, certainly. But Matt coming back with five marks in the first six frames here in the third string. He's putting some daylight between himself and the defending champion. And all you people watching the show, it's getting close to one o'clock now. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, why take the family camp and bowling. But take it to one of your main state bowling centers. Those are the people who sponsor this show. They put in a lot of money. And when you do go in and tell them, look, we watch the show, we appreciate what you're doing, and we're here as a couple. Oh, excellent try by Don Saucier. He trails by 10 pins through the fifth here, or the 25th, I should say, overall. But he has another spear facing him in the sixth frame as he comes back with a 10. Fine 10, but he needs marks right now. So he is down 10 plus this bonus ball to Matt Pico. And, of course, the winner, reserving the right to come back and defend against Al Joy of Colonial Lanes Westbrook next week, right here at noontime. On the main Candlepin Bowling, Fox 51, WPXT, TV. Seven more. Seventeen pins, separating the two, four frames remaining. The door is still open for Don. He's only a couple marks away. Not, it's not out of reach by any means, and that one was, again, out over the 10-foot lob line, and John Killinger whistling that one. So it will be an eight box, even though the pin was uh, hit by Matt Pico. So 106 through seven. Also want to remind our fans and faithful viewers out there that uh, the main candle pin bowling um, taping, next TV taping, will be held right here at Vacationland Bowling Center in Saco on Monday, October 29th. And we'd love to have you come down here and uh, be part of the show. 
It begins at 10 a.m. And uh, come on down and cheer on your favorite. If you can't do it, we certainly want you to be right there and viewing it each and every Saturday. And you can do both, certainly. So an eight box for Pico, he moves to 114. Certainly his best string of the day. He had an opener of 10, 118 and a 100 to follow. John Saucier with 117, 109 in the middle. Well, the spare eludes Saucier, comes back with a 10 box, picks up a couple more pins, but he needs marks. Right now, he's running out of boxes and comes back with a good nine pin drop. 15 pins separate the two bowlers. Saucier can close it, close in on that lead, and he does with that spare. So he can cut that at least in half with a good fill as he's at 93 plus a bonus ball, well, Matt Pico, 114. Yeah, let's put it this way, Matt can't coast in. Matt has got to get all he can get right here. That's right, and that's exactly what he's thinking. As he comes back with a near hammer and a nine drop, looks at that single pin down in the right-hand corner. That's the number 10 pin. Again, if he, if he can see the pin, the best shot is to pick the pin without touching the other and exactly what he did, Chris. And that's a good tip for you young bowlers out there. If you can see a pin clearly, even though you do have some deadwood out there, many times the angle of the deadwood will, will dictate what you should do. But if you can, you heard that from a pretty good source in Chris Anton. Go for the pin. Oh, just the two pins, the three nine. Half Worcester is what he's looking at. Not what he wanted right now, that punch. It really takes the starch out of your game. A little thin on the head pin. Not only the two on the spare deck, but the possibility of, of Ned not getting a good finish, finish box here. You know, that six, four sand, six oh, an excellent, excellent ten as he uh, cleans him up. He bailed out of that. He great. certainly did. A fine 136 string and a 354 total. So 354 for the number one qualifier, Matt Pico of Saco Valley Lanes. Now Saucier, working with Spear. Well, he's got a break. Got a break on that one. Triangle right side. He's looking at the three, five, and the six. This is for two in a row, and an opportunity to climb back and win this match. The seesaw battle, it's been throughout. Let it go just no, a little early. Mark. He's got to have a 10 here and then get the mark. Six pins separate the two right now, Chris. So he needs is what, 17? Nine, no. Now it'll make... Uh, Spare make, and seven, a mark right. is seven, right? So he needs a mark. He's going to return. He's at 109. Actually, uh, nine pins. Nine pins. Nine pins. Oh. Oh. oh, look at this. He's, oh, he's going to give that a good snap, I'll tell you right now. He'll... The four and the ten with deadwood to the left of the four pin. Try to hit the right side of that deadwood and spin it out of that other side. See what he can do with it. Oh, he got it out too far. And it will be Matt Pico, the number one qualifier, who will be coming back. Matt Pico will come back next week against Al Joy on a fine effort. But coming up just a little bit short, the defending champion, Don Saucier, as he falls to the... Uh, Youngster from Saco Valley. He's not not a real youngster, but in comparison, I guess, to uh, Don's age, he uh, probably would be considered such. But a great match, Chris. Back and forth. It was always uh, in doubt, really, as to the outcome because uh, neither one could uh, could really. Well, it really it went down to the last box because if Don would have come up with a spare, he had a good shot at getting seven or eight on it and and winning the match. Okay, we'll be back with uh, more to follow right after this. And it's worth $100 as we start at 100 and we will work up $10 a week until it has been made. Then it will drop back to $100 again. 
Oh, look at this. Beautiful attempt. Nearly. All right. Chris, we got the uh, bowl handy. Uh, yeah. We're going to have to reach yeah. in and see what we can do here to qualify, remember, for the uh, $250 weekend, the fabulous weekend stay at the Portland Marriott. And let's see what you can do out there. Chris, you draw it. And you want me to draw you it? You draw it. Yeah. We need a total of 697, and it's got to be right on the button. It's got to be exactly. Six oh, my. 698. I don't. 698, 697. We missed by one. Sandra what? Oliver from Allen Avenue in Lewiston, Maine. 698, what? and the number was 697. What a way. All right. <laughs> Great try on the money and, uh, and that weekend, the $250 value. We will be back with the presentations and all the checks and all the good stuff right after this. <laughs> If it like a change, that can be arranged. Tell them now. It's... Uh, you remember what you were doing on October 8th, 1960? I think so, yeah. I think <laughs> I was bowling a guy named Chris. <laughs> he got a double strike about the second string. Very first show, right? And you were the opening yeah. show, and here we are 30 years later, and you're still on it. Just goes to show how your consistency is. And listen, congratulations. There's a check as a runner-up, and I know you'll be back, yeah. definitely. <laughs> And a big check of 200 and uh, Creative Awards plaque from uh, those good people over in Scarborough. And uh, Matt Pico, you will be coming back next week. Good finishing string. You, uh, you really struggled in the early going. Yeah, it was kind of tough getting going the first week here. And uh, left quite a few boxes open to let Don get back into it. And he missed a few spares that should have gone. And could have gone either way. Did you use a few extras on that 7-Eleven qualifying? Yeah. <laughs> I wish okay. it would have gone. Hope you've saved a few for next week because we've got Al Joy, and he'll be here representing the Colonial Lanes right here on Maine Canopin Bowling. Good afternoon, everybody.